I Drive SoCal is brought to you by the best automotive retailers from across Southern California. We consider our dealer partners friends and highly recommend them. When it's time for you to buy, just go to idrivesocal.com and click on dealers to get connected. Or email me and I'll personally introduce you. Tom at idrivesocal.com. That's Tom, T-O-M, at I, the letter I, drive like drive a car, SoCal like Southern California.com. Tom at idrivesocal.com. Now, on with the podcast. There's probably well over a hundred different models and makes that you could actually test drive. When you get in it and you turn it on and you feel, you know, how it drives and you experience the technology, it's the only place where you can go and see pretty much every manufacturer, all of the new things that they have in one place. Welcome to I Drive SoCal, the podcast all about mobility from the automotive capital of the United States, Southern California. IA. Tom Smith here, and I am excited to be in San Diego County. This is the furthest south that I Drive SoCal uh, podcast has been recorded. Uh, San Diego County in wh- wh- where exactly again? Sorrento Valley. Sorrento Valley. And joining me is Kevin Leap, Mr. Kevin Leap of the San Diego International Auto Show and the San Diego New Car New Car Dealers Association. Kevin, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So the uh, you know I drive SoCal. We're we're rounding our our first year here, and uh, this is our first podcast that we're doing with you that we hope to be doing uh, year after year in uh, association with the San Diego International Auto Show that's coming up here in, let's see, we're recording this in, uh, what is it, uh, November 20th, and, and the show is December, December 7, 27th through the 30th. All right. The show takes place in? The San Diego Convention Center, downtown San Diego, right on the water, yep. on Harbor Drive. We were talking off mic a little bit. The San Diego International Auto Show has been going on for quite some time. 1928. First year was in Balboa Park and then Esplanade. I think they had seven or eight cars. It was just a huge, you know, social, socialite event, you know, very, very high end San Diegans dressed to the nines coming to see the horseless carriage, if you will. The horseless carriage. <laughs> the horseless carriage. Back when you could trade in a horse for a car. <laughs> You know, I find that interesting actually these days as, as we, you know, read stories about autonomous driving Mm -hmm. and the inevitable accidents that happen with autonomous driving, which are mostly Uh, caused by humans. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Um, but it, it makes me think like, you know, hey, on the one hand, we think, hey, this is something that, that we're, we're experiencing as a first time, but it's really not right. When, when, uh, there was a massive shift when cars came about and and I'm sure there was lots of issues with horses and buggies and cars replacing them on the roads and and that transition right? absolutely i I wasn't there for it, but i you were I, I can imagine I remember it like it was yesterday actually. <laughs> watch little house on the prairie or bonanza or something <laughs> something like that right um well okay, so nineteen twenty eight so you guys have been around for a long long time uh and I know you've only been at here at the show for, for 12 years. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the show. Okay. Uh, it was basically in Balboa Park for a very long time. In the 70s and 80s, the show moved into Golden Hall, which is um, in downtown San Diego right next to the City Hall. And that was when it pretty much had about probably 50 cars there at any given time. So okay. it was relatively, you know, it wasn't it was not a large show at that point. Uh, but 26 years ago in 1992, when the new convention center opened, we took over all 525,000 square feet of the floor. Wow. In addition to, um, some years, 100,000 square feet in the, the tent sale area. Plus we have 130,000 square feet of outside test drive courses. So we have, a, you know, pretty, pretty big footprint and about all said and done over 600 vehicles and you know, that we have, 
I think it's 13 test drives this year, which is we're really excited about. We've okay. got Alpha Romeo's coming um, this year, which is great. We're going to be doing something with Ram Trucks and Ford Ranger and, and the, our, our, our usual folks, Toyota and Chevy has two ride and drives. FCA is doing, you know, all of their brands in one as well as Mazda, um, Subaru, Nissan. So we've got a lot of folks joining us. Will all the ride and drives be outside? Uh, there are, there, yes, all of them are outside with the exception of Camp Jeep. Okay. Which is inside, just a 35,000 square foot off road track inside. Excellent. Which is super fun. Yep. Yep. It's a total Disney e ticket. Yeah, if right. If they still did the e tickets, yeah, right. <laughs> um, so speaking of which, yeah, Disney, uh, a lot, lot cheaper than Disney for sure. Um, That's right. But but the show isn't free, right? There is a, a small cost for for tickets. Yeah, there's fifteen dollars for a, an adult, and you know twelve twelve dollars for kids and seniors and military, and it's pretty hard to not find a two dollar off coupon at a local dealership or at a Seven Eleven. Right, right. And online at you know sdautoshow dot com. So sdautoshow dot com is is where you can go to get a a discount for tickets. And again, while we're on the the uh, kind of stats there, it is the twenty seventh through the thirtieth, right? 27th through the 30th of December. Of December. Correct. What, what days do those fall? Is that Thursday through Sunday? Through Thursday through Sunday. Okay. Correct. Perfect. Um, now, the, uh, the, the ride and drives, you mentioned 13. Now, is that 13 different manufacturers or 13 different vehicles that will be, that will be, um, uh, ride and drive. It's 13 unique ride and drives. The only one that's a double up is Chevy has two, but that's just because they, you know, want to make sure that every single one of their, uh, vehicles, you know, makes and models is available to drive. The rest of them are unique. Okay. And now will those be taking place, the ride and drives be taking place, uh, th- Thursday through Sunday that uh, each day of the show, or is it on- the ride and drives only going to be on specific days? No, they're all five, they're all four days. Um, the only thing is they do close a little bit early just due to the, you know, darkness falling on us. Sure. Sure. So. And in each one of those actually represents, you know, multiple different models, makes and models of the, the models of the vehicles. So, you know, if you look at F, the FC, the, you know, the Fiat Chrysler America ride and drive, it's going to have Dodge represented and you know, Jeep represented and pretty much everything, you know, every other brand that they make. But they do have a unique Camp Jeep that we spoke of before mm-hmm. and a unique Alfa Romeo and the unique Ram. So there's, there, there's probably, well, over a hundred different models and makes that you could actually test drive. Got it. Got it. Okay. And uh, so, so basically you can, uh, you could come to the show all four days in order to drive everything that, that is being offered to drive. To and, pr- drive. and probably still not do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, now the ride and drives, I know have become a really big part of, of all auto shows that the, the uh, new car auto shows. And, and that's an awesome thing, right? It's a, it's a way for consumers to go uh, and kick the tires quite literally right. drive something and uh, get all the information without any of the the pressure, right? And it's it's just a really. I mean, there's there's a big difference between going and sitting in a stationary vehicle, and you know, experiencing the comfort and the styling and all of those different things. But you know, there's when you when you get in it and you turn it on and you feel you know how it drives and you experience the technology. And the, the beauty of it is is that you're driving with a highly trained. You know, specialist yep. who can answer any of your questions, any, you know, provide you with any information that you need. And then, you know, if there's, there's no selling at the auto show. So basically, if you are, you find something that you like, you basically can just, you just go to a dealership at that point. And the, one of the things that we found fascinating is that there are a huge amount of people that actually change their mind. On what they're going to sure. buy being at the auto show just because of the fact it's the only place where you can go and see pretty much every manufacturer, all of the new things that they have in one place. Yep. And you're talking to, like I said, highly trained product specialists and there's no sales pressure. So you go there, the average stay of our guests is about three hours. They are more educated in that three hours about everything that's available than they could possibly be if they, you know, spent it on the web or yep. you know, went to 
I mean, it's just not it's not physically possible to go to that many dealerships. Well, and and I mean, that's the key thing is being able to go from one to the other to the other all in one sitting in one in one setting right and and you can do so in a family friendly environment i want to talk about uh any special family uh activities that are going on but before doing so you know i I have to comment that you know we're podcasting so obviously we're leveraging technology and you mentioned the internet obviously everybody's leveraging technology in their vehicle purchases but the concept to me with some of the vehicles and you see the television commercials like you know hey the the app uh and there's so many of them that are coming out and trying, but but the the concept of of using an app to buy a car end to end, and the car is going to drop at, at, at my my doorstep. I, I get it, and it's kind of like a nice novelty. But th- personally, never in a million years. Yeah, I'll you know? do I'll do it with with Grubhub, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes that's not even good, right? <laughs> yeah, that's not a big commitment, right? And, uh, well, I don't have to that's, eat it all. I didn't spend fi- that much money. That's not a five year <laughs> sitting in your yeah, yeah. That's a one and done. I, I like I like that analogy. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, the, you know, our vehicles are the the in almost all cases the second most expensive purchase that that we make in our lifetime. And and the concept of doing one without actually interacting with a person, without actually sitting in the thing, um, you know, I've said before, I I, I want to sit in it when it's when it's parked. I want to sit in it when it's when 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 I'm at a stoplight. I want to sit it's in, in it. traffic. Yeah, and... yeah, all, all of that is a factor, right. especially here in Southern California, because we spend exponentially more time in our cars than any. It's uh, you know I don't know if you're familiar with the company Inrix. I'm not I N R I X. They've been doing studies and uh, Southern California, L A. We're down in San Diego, but L A. has uh, earned the mantle of the most traffic congestion on the planet for the last six years running. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised in San Diego. It's not too far exactly. behind. I mean, we're really growing a lot here. But, you know, one of the things, too, is that, you know, people are keeping their cars for a very long time these days. So as, as you reference a commitment, that's a commitment. Yep. You know, and you don't want something sitting in your driveway for, you know, seven or ten years that you just are not fond of. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, okay, on that note, I had to throw out one other personal thing, and, and podcast listeners know this. I started leasing a few years back and, and I just, I, I love leasing because I'm always under warranty. I'm not, I'm not so concerned about where I park it as far as at Costco. If the, you know, some knucklehead's going to run a grocery cart into it and it gets a ding. It's like, well, it's a lease. It's going back. And the coolest thing is that I get every two to three years, whatever my lease term is, I get to go out and shop and get the latest, greatest technology. Um, that that the manufacturers all manufacturers are putting out these days and i mean these things are technological marvels on wheels they're computers on wheels oh man i just bought a you know lexus 450 you know hybrid and i I still can't figure it out (laughs) (laughs) i had to pull over the other day just to look in the in the phone book size you know manual owner's manual to figure out how to turn off something that was blinking i'm like okay (laughs) um so Back to the the show. Uh, family friendliness goes hand in hand with uh, automotive shows everywhere. Uh, what do you guys have on tap? Um, first, family event wise, and then maybe any anything else that's that's happened, uh, perhaps unique other than the the ride and drives. Um, we we actually the thing that we really focus on for family. There's families there every day. Sure. You know, it's in fact one of the things that I found super interesting is that I can't tell you um, what a uh, history families have of auto shows it's tradition yeah you know the, the grandfather started taking the father who's now taking the son who's now taking the grandson and things along those it's lines a great so way to bond it is it's a super way just to go and they have a great time they get to look at the engines and you know talk yeah. with the product specialists and but uh, we have family i don't agree with your haircut yes. i don't agree with the music you listen to <laughs> i don't agree with the clothes you wear but isn't right. that a nice corvette right. and put <laughs> and put that dang phone down <laughs> Yeah. But, uh, no, it's actually, but it's really fun, and, and pe- you could just see the joy. I mean, it's just all there's. There's a few criers every once in a while, yeah. but you know you can't avoid that when right. you're in got a half a mile floor of, uh, of filled with people. But we have um, family 
Day, which is our special day, and that's okay. actually on Sunday. All right. And that's when all kids 12 and under are free. Nice. And then we have all sorts of stuff, like we, we'll have Black Panther there. Last year, we had Spider-Man and oh, Captain right. America, and we've had Supergirl, and you know we have the clowns with balloons and face painters and spinning for prizes and just, you know, just kind of fun stuff. Sure. Keep it fun for the kids. Absolutely. Course. Keep them entertained. What do you see in the future? Uh, now, you have a unique perspective being the head of the New Car Dealers Association for San Diego, uh, San Diego County. Actually, I'm just the head of the auto show. Oh, just ahead of the auto show. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a- um, so then what do you see for the future in that unique position um, for the future of auto shows? You know, it's there's a lot of disruption that's happening out there right now mm-hmm. with just the you know ride sharing and uh, in the I mean downtown San Diego has more bikes and scooters you know sure. birds and yep. and green bikes than it does cars it seems like sometimes really? and yeah and millennials are really taking their time to decide whether or not to buy one. Plus some things in the dealer franchise system are being challenged and autonomous vehicles is a whole new thing. This is San Diego's a hotbed for it. Yep. I mean, we're, we're, we could throw a rock outside the front door and hit Qualcomm. So, you know, and they're one of the top players in that, in that area. Plus we've got a lot of test driving or, you know, testing going on down here. So it's just, it's super interesting to see, uh, the difference in what people are focusing on in their exhibits. Um, there's a lot more focus on technology, sure. uh, less so than their styling. Uh, there's a lot more focusing on safe, focus on safety and comfort. Um, but it's going to be an interesting, and it's not going to be a long time. I don't think it's, it's happening now. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a very interesting five years to see how everything goes. As we were talking about autonomous vehicles before I went to an all day, um, uh, seminar or you know, conference on autonomous vehicles. And they were talking about the number of accidents that were caused by them. And actually there's not, they're really not caused by them. They're right. caused by the humans because sure. the humans, you know, run stoplights and they don't stop, you know, that they do the, the California stop, right? You know, <laughs> and then the autonomous vehicles, you know, do the full on stop. So right. they're, they're getting most of this, the, the autonomous vehicles are getting rear ended because they're, they're, they're minding the rules of the road right. precisely. Yep. You know, while I say, I think they referred to us as the hams behind the wheel are, <laughs> are not doing that. So anyway. Uh, so uh, one of the, one of the things that, that, I fell in love with it or just marveled at the first popular mechanics cover that I saw with a mock-up of a flying car. Yeah. And it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a suburban, it was, it was a, a, a aerial view of a suburban kind of house and the, the, I think it was a red flying car had just come out of the parking or uh, par- the uh, garage and uh, the husband and wife or whatever were, were in the flying car and happily you know jetting away from from their house any prediction you, you mentioned five years will be interesting but any prediction on on flying cars uh and i know that's i i know it sounds fairy tale maybe it is fairy tale i don't know it seems like it might be a little bit more re- I mean, certainly it's more realistic than it's ever been. I don't think it's an unrealistic thing. I think our infrastructure couldn't handle it. I mean, you know, we're having a hard enough time with drones, right? You know, and I think that drones are going to be the precursor to something like that, right? And when you see all of the different things that are happening with potential delivery service and surveillance and uh, you know law enforcement using it to get to the scene of the crime more quickly and sure. things like that, but you know, that's just that's like just putting a gigantic slab of ice down and letting everybody go wild because there's you know with that's that, there's there's no I like that there's just like there's no lines on the road there's no place to stop you know you're sliding around yeah. so i i don't i wouldn't be surprised if there's something in the works but i just am not sure how that would you know how the infrastructure would handle the dynamics of traffic yep 
And and I agree that the slab of ice is <laughs> – I like that one. But, you know, the, the, the one thing that I posed in, um, in various conversations is, you know, look, with autonomous driving, there's a lot of stuff on the ground to hit. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the air, there's less to hit. So in theory, I don't know. I don't know. But it's fascinating. It's well, fascinating. that depends on how many flying cars there are, I guess, right? Right. <laughs> well, in I was in a uh, – I, I sat through a – presentation it was actually at the peterson automotive museum and it was on reimagining mobility and salita reynolds the um head of la's uh, city department of transportation did a presentation and it was interesting that the city has already thought through how they will monetize traffic in their airspace Hmm. and basically they're saying look we're going to charge um per altitude it will cost more the higher you you fly, but of course the higher you fly, um, will be less congested. So those of us that, you know, <laughs> aren't aren't on the uh, on the higher tax brackets will be flying at lower levels and still be dealing with traffic congestion. Right? <laughs> Who knows? Right? It's, it's, it's fascinating to think about, though. So uh, maybe five to ten years, we see flying car ride and drives at at the San Diego International Auto Show. I doubt in five years the flying cars. I think that it, I think it's going to take that long for the autonomous vehicles to work through their All right. their kinks and things along those lines. Because it's again, it's an infrastructure issue and in sure. you know the the human factor. Yep. Okay. Uh, well. Mr. Kevin Leap, thank you so much for joining me for the iDrive SoCal podcast. The uh, Before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you'd like to add about the San Diego International Auto Show that uh, I missed? No, it's just going to be a great year. And, you know, San Diego is a military town. And, uh, you know, Nissan is, is uh, giving thousands of free tickets away to military uh Folks, every, oh, really? at all their dealerships, which is great. Um, you know, so you go to any Nissan dealership if you have a military, active, or retired military ID, and get you know, free tickets to the auto show. And we just, it's, it's going to be, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of activity. It's not just going in and looking at cars and carpet. There's a lot of interactive uh, thing. Uh, pieces that the manufacturers are bringing and like we talked about before you could be there for all four days and not drive every car that's there always always a good time and uh i'm going to reiterate that that's that's a pretty interesting point the and and a good point thank you to all of our servicemen and women both active and retired yes can go into a nissan dealership and grab free tickets yes absolutely starting about uh december 17th that's fantastic that's fantastic and well deserved absolutely Um, mr kevin leap the director of the san diego international auto show uh thank you so much for joining me and uh for i drive socal I am Tom Smith. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. This episode was engineered and edited by Bobby Flores. Howdy. Still here, huh? That's cool, but this one's pretty much done. But we have tons of additional content at our website, idrivesocal.com. If you're not listening from there already, you should definitely check it out. From there, you can subscribe to our newsletter, the podcast, or leave a note. And I'd love to hear from you, too. Here's my email, tom at idrivesocal.com. That's tom, T-O-M, at idrive, the letter I, drive like drive a car, socal like southerncalifornia.com. Tom at idrivesocal.com. Thanks again for listening, and please reach out with whatever's on your mind.